All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, I hope you guys have enough rest and fill up, and then obviously drink enough because I hope you guys stay hydrated during this class session. Um, all right, so our next class session, there will be our special guest speaker, Dr. Paramita Prananing TS SHLLM. And our session will also be moderated uh, by Miss Sartika Nandelestari SHMH. But before that, I would like to briefly introduce Miss Sartika Nanda. All right, she is a lecturer in Universitas Diponegoro, Faculty of Law. She obtains uh, her bachelor's degree in Universitas Diponegoro and her master's degree in Universitas Diponegoro and the National University of Malaysia. She is currently a lecturer in business law department. So without further ado, please welcome Ms. Artika Nanda. The screen is yours. Okay, thank you very much for Dennis as a master of ceremony for this afternoon. Okay, good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I would like to say welcome to our honorable speaker, Ibu Dr. Paramita Prananing Tias from Faculty of Law, Universitas Diponegoro, Indonesia. And also our summer course participants who come from Malaysia, Australia, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Fiji, Mauritius, and also Brunei Darussalam. Thank you very much for finding time and also joining our today's lecture. Our today's lecture is digitalization for micro, small and medium entrepreneur in Indonesia. It's a very interesting topics since Indonesia has a potential to upgrade the human capacity and our productivity. My name is Sartika Nanda Lestari as a moderator for, for today from business law department. And all the participants, uh, now we can begin. For those who want to know more about digitalization for a micro, small, and medium entrepreneur, Dr. Paramita here to enlighten us regarding the topic. But first, I would like to uh, yeah, give the curriculum vitae of Ibu Dr. Paramita. As we can see that Ibu Dr. Paramita, born in Semarang, 30 June, uh, 69, and then married with two daughter. Best, uh, uh, her background is Bachelor of Law, Faculty of Law, Universitas Diponegoro, Semarang, Master of Law, LLM in Comparative Law, University of Florida, United States of America, Doctor of Law, Faculty of Law, Universitas Gajah Mada, Yogyakarta, Indonesia, and now she is a lecturer, Business Law Department, Faculty of Law, Universitas Diponegoro, since 1993, and also as a consultant for our KPPU since 1999, consultant for several law offices since 2010, and also a consultant for police department, especially for business law cases since 2015. So yeah, she has a lot of experience regarding business law. Without further ado, it's time for you, Dr. Paramita, to give a lecture for all the participants. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ibu Nanda. Thank you, Dennis. And thank you all the committee for the summer program. It is a very honorable for opportunity for me to participate in this program. Uh, the Lex Provisia 2021 has already choose a great topic on toward the digitalization of law in Indonesia. That's why I choose a small part of digitalization of law in Indonesia. That is about uh, digitalization for economic uh, society for the micro, small, and medium enterprises. Uh, may I share screen, please? Can I do it? Okay. Sure, Ibu Paramita. Okay. The digitalization for micro, small, 
and medium entrepreneur in Indonesia. We can see that this is some examples for the activity or business activity of micro, small, and medium businesses in Indonesia, enterprises in Indonesia. There are many uh, aspects or many types of entrepreneur that doing business as micro, small, and medium. Mostly, they are active in culinary business, fashion business, craft business, uh, tourism business. And you, you can see here, there's some traditional stuff that already extinct, uh, extinct yeah? Uh, but it uh, appears again in a more pretty uh, appearance. This is uh, Wartek or Warung Tegal, the best culinary in uh, campus area because it's cheap. Students usually eat there. And this is some culinary business too. This is a fashion business that is uh, very important since 2020. You see, they, produ they produce masks to prevent COVID-19. Batik industry, craft industry by using leftover from coconut. Leather industry, tourism industry, tofu, it's also culinary industry. Uh, herbs, traditional herbs. It is very important to maintain your health uh, good during the pandemic by drinking traditional herbs. Also agriculture industries, orchard farms, homestay in some uh, area that is famous for uh, its scenery, okay? This is uh, industry, home industry for fashion, batik. This is uh, cookies industry, culinary industries, many types of culinary that is uh, cheap, nice, and famous. Furniture industries, okay? Those industries were produced by micro, small, and medium entrepreneur, MSME. Small and mid-sized enterprises are businesses that maintain revenues, assets, or a number of employees below a certain threshold. Each country has its own definition of what constitutes a small and medium-sized enterprise. Certain size criteria must be met and occasionally the industry in which the company operates in is taken into account as well. Though small in size, small and mid-sized enterprises play an important role in the economy. They outnumber large firms considerably, considerably employ fast numbers of people, and are generally entrepreneurial in nature, helping to shape innovation. Some countries also recognize micro-sized enterprise. The term micro-enterprise, also known as a micro-business, refer to a small business that employs few people. A micro-enterprise usually operates with fewer than 10 people and it started with a small amount of capital advance from a bank or other organization. Medium small, uh, micro small medium enterprise criteria under law of the Republic of Indonesia number 20 year 2008. For micro enterprise, enterprise with net asset less than 50 million Indonesia rupiah land and building excluded, or enterprise which have less than 300 million total annual sales, 300 million rupiahs total annual sales. Small enterprises, enterprises with net assets from 50 million to 1 
500 million rupiah. Land and building excluded. Or with total annual sales from 300 million rupiah to 2.5 billion rupiah. Medium-sized enterprises are enterprises with net assets from 500 million to 10 billion rupiah. Land and buildings excluded or with total annual sales from 2.5 to 50 billion rupiah. Since the enactment of the famous omnibus law on job creation or the law of the Republic of Indonesia number 11 of 2020 on job creation, the criteria of micro, small, and medium enterprises has expanded. Article 35 to Article 36 of the Government Regulation Number 7, Year 2021 on East Protection and Empowerment of Cooperative, Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises expands such criteria to be added into micro, small, medium enterprises, such as business capital, turnover, net worth indicators, annual sales results, investment value, incentive and disincentives, application of environmentally friendly technology, local content, and the number of workers. This expansion criteria should mean that more businesses can be categorized as micro, small, medium enterprises. Most firms in Indonesia are micro, small, medium enterprises, represent a considerable portion of Indonesia's economy and employment. MSMEs in Indonesia tend to pay low wages. MSMEs tend to be less productive than large firms. The owner and operators of MSMEs tend to lack formal education and those owners with higher education levels are more likely to operate larger MSMEs and to formally register their firms. Many MSMEs serve local markets and have not taken spent steps to expand their businesses. MSMEs has many challenges. First, their challenge are, is access to finance and credit. MSME have problems obtaining licenses to formally operate and many who should formalize their business and can afford to pay taxes still do not do so. Small firms may have difficulty assessing sources of credit or if they have access, they may not have the collateral required to borrow or may be charged prohibitively high interest rates. Second, their challenge is access to markets and demand. Small firms <coughs> struggle to market their products and compete with larger firms on quality and price. The third challenge is access to raw materials. Access to steady sources of raw materials can be problematic particularly for certain industries. For example, there, are, they, there may be supply bottlenecks. Some internationally produced raw materials may fluctuate in price and micro, small, and medium enterprises can face unfavorable competition for raw materials with large firms. The fourth challenge is issues with labor and human capital. These firms must confront a range of labor market challenges, including finding skilled workers, complying with minimum wage laws, and avoiding employee turnover. There are special challenges, market. We are going to talk about market challenge for MSME. Many uh, MSMEs serve local markets and do not expand their businesses. Mostly, they have a narrowly focused demand market. Nearly 75% of micro and small firms sold their entire output of goods locally. 
in the same district where the goods were produced. Less than 6% of micro and small firms sold output to market outside of the same province and less than 0.5% of micro and small firms exported any goods. Larger firms were more likely to be outward oriented than smaller micro firms. Now we talk about the relationship between MSME and COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 has hit MSMEs really hard. Some initial reports suggest that MSMEs are affected because of, the, of their dependence on external input. It was shown on OECD and Asian report in 2020. MSMEs faced a dramatic reduction in demand, which led to lower revenue. At the same time, these enterprises might, exper might experience a sudden loss of labor supply due to movement restrictions following the implementation of large-scale social restriction, colloquially termed PSBB in Indonesia, or in this month, we call it P PPKM. Yeah? In uh, abroad, they call it lockdown, but politically correct, our government did not use the word lockdown. They choose another word to describe lockdown. Okay? The problems faced by MSMEs in Indonesia due to the COVID-19 pandemic require special attention. The COVID-19 crisis has been a game changer all around the world. Lockdowns and social distancing impose a radical rethinking of business models. With firms moving operation online or implementing smart working solution at short notice in order to remain in business and overcome destruction in supply chains. Early evidence from business survival worldwide point to up to 70% of micro, small and medium enterprises having intensified their use of digital technology technologies due to COVID-19. Many of these changes are poised to last given the investment made and business benefits of the new models. Many businesses have not had the time or the advice needed to plan this transition well, to select the right digital system, to upgrade digital skills, to develop the right protection and security and fully customize and understand the potential of these new tools. For these firms, the transition is not yet complete and comes with risk. It is important to note, therefore, that while accelerated adoption of digital tools may be a silver lining to the crisis, this remains a continuous need for advice, support, and guidance from reliable sources to cement the transition, to address risk, and to exploit the potential of the new tools. A. Ibu Nanda, maybe we need to yeah, uh, give uh, the participant time for discussion? Oh yeah, sure, Pumita. So for all the participants, now in the middle of the lecture, we will have time for discussion. Yeah, sure, Pumita. Yeah, is there any, if, if there are any question or maybe to share the uh, same condition with their country during the pandemic, you can do it, please do so. Yeah, maybe for the participants that I mentioned earlier for Malay from Malaysia, Australia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Fiji, Mauritius. Oh, yeah. We already have the question, Bumita. Uh, may, I, may I read the question, Bumita, for you? Uh, I can read it. Oh, okay. Uh... This is from Nick. I would like to ask regarding the small industry and its relation with law. We all know that nowadays small industries are getting degrading every period of time. 
they cannot survive, especially in this period of time when pandemic hit us very hard. On the other hand, the digitalization are not really accessible for the small industry. However, in China, home industry are getting bigger and bigger. The government itself seems very esteem the small, esteem the small industry, even in some of them are caught violating the intellectual property rights. In your opinion, how the laws position themselves? Okay, uh, can I see Nick face? Where Nick. is Nick? Nick is from Queen Mary University, Australia. Okay. Nick Ahmad Ayman Hakimi. Ya, ya anda. Dia orangnya. Oke. Okay. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, the Indonesian government already have many law to protect, to push, to give a good environment for uh, small enterprises to establish, to produce, and to live long life. But some of those regulations are partial. Are partial. Uh, they are not in harmonized with each other. For example, uh, since 2014, the Indonesian government, especially President Joko Widodo, already established many regulations to is the micro small cooperative on doing business the moment on how they start their business is getting easier and easier and on the other hand government push them please make your business legalized once your business is legalized you will have easier way to get aid, financial aid, to get aid in production and to get aid in marketing. So law in Indonesia is very, uh, very good in writing, yeah, to protecting and to promote micro, small cooperative industries, businesses. Now, talking about the digitalization. Uh, in Indonesia, we have some unique uh, marketplace, such as Tokopedia, Bukalapak, hmm, there? there are many, many aspects. And Indonesian people, mostly, they still love Facebook. Not me, I don't like Facebook anymore. Uh, but many people in the rural area, they love Facebook. And they maximize the use of Facebook to marketing their business. WhatsApp. They're also maximizing the using of WhatsApp. Instagram too. Twitter, no. Many Indonesian people don't don't like Twitter, especially in the rural area. Why? Because they cannot exchange their picture. Yeah, can? TikTok maybe next time. They will use TikTok to sell their products. Okay. Uh, Nick, uh, is my question already answered? Uh, sorry, is my answer already uh, enough for your question? Halo Nick. Oke, okay. ini Nick sudah jawab. Thank you about that, Profesor. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, Nanda. I will continue. Can I? Yeah, sure, Dokter. Oke. Okay. Okay. COVID-19 impact on micro, small, medium enterprises in Indonesia. First, more than 45% of MSMEs surveyed noted that they have had problems obtaining raw materials. Why? Because 
the mobility was uh, reduced. Okay, nine out nine out of ten MSMEs face lower demand for their products during the pandemic, especially when the MSMEs need to meet face to face with their customers. Most of the MSMEs found it difficult to distribute to distribute their products due to COVID-19. <coughs> Around 44% of the MSMEs surveyed had joined the online marketplace or e-commerce channels like Tokopedia, Shopee, etc. during the COVID-19 pandemic. There were more female MSMEs owners 32% before pandemic and 47% after pandemic, then male and SME owners. 25% before pandemic and 40% after pandemic in the online marketplace. Two-thirds of MSMEs took in less revenue during the pandemic, while more than 80% had lower profit margins during COVID-19. More than 53% of MSMEs experience a decrease in asset value. In terms of the impact by gender, more than 37% of female-owned MSMEs face a decrease in revenue between 40% to 60%. One of the alternative strategies adopted by MSMEs to minimize their expenses is reducing consumption of utilities. Thus, they can lowering their bills. More than 40% of MSMEs had been selling their products through the online marketplace. This report came from the report impact of COVID-19 pandemic on MSMEs in Indonesia. Okay, done by, uh, had been done by the LPAM of FAPUI and UUNDP in 2020. Now we will talk about digitalization. Digitalization is the use of digital technologies to change a business model and provide new revenue and value producing, producing opportunities. It is the process of moving to digital business. Digitalization is when you use digital technologies to change a business model and provide new revenue and value producing opportunities. Digitally, digitalize, digitalizing your organization can give you a competitive advantage by doing this better, faster, and cheaper than your competition. There are four foundations for digitalization. There are the key technology for empowering MSMEs. First, cloud-based tools and computing. Second, social media platforms and apps. Third, e-commerce platforms and apps. And fourth is sharing economic platform and apps. Cloud computing. Cloud computing enables business to leverage resources and higher level services immediately. And in real time, without building up computing infrastructure in-house. Via, uh, via a digital platform, MSMEs can access search engines, computing tools, templates, critical algorithms, and data analytic application, as long as they have access to a network. For MSMEs, this means that cloud-based platforms for basic business management, from balancing account payable and receivable to inventory management and invoicing, can be done inexpensively or even free, simply by accessing an online tool. The ability to access virtually any kind of information, service, or collaborative network at little, at little or no cost is a paradigm, paradigm shift for MSMEs. 
The critical issues to ensure that small business owners not only have reliable and affordable access to the cloud, but that they possess the basic knowledge and technical skills to put newly access tool and resources to work for the business. Social media. Social media enable users to interact with each other on digital platforms that are designed for community-based input, interaction, content sharing, and collaboration. Social media platforms serve as conduit for commercial activities with far greater frequency than in more mature markets. Using global platforms such as Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube, Instagram, Line, and Twitter, for example, provides MSMEs with real-time access to bleed to billions of customers, collaborators, suppliers, and other service providers on a scale unimaginable a decade ago. E-commerce. E-commerce describes all transactions made in the digital space on platforms that connect buyers, sellers, and other service providers. E-commerce platforms are microeconomies and also connect extensively to social media networks for MSME. At the heart of any e-commerce ecosystem is a digital wallet or e-payment system that is trustworthy and simple to use. In Indonesia, this include local e-commerce platforms such as Bukalapak, Tokopedia, Traveloka, in addition to the big players such as Amazon. And many, uh, many e-commerce platforms also already established a digital wallet too. Yeah? Uh, in Indonesia, uh, we are very uh, used to use GoPay, OPPO. Yeah? Uh, mungkin Mr. Bagus Ibu Nanda has uh, more uh, experience than me. Yeah, because I'm from the old school. They are the, the youngest gen generation. Yeah. Sharing economy. Sharing economy is an economic model that is based on collaborative sharing and using of products and services. Sometimes they refer to as the informal economy. This type of digital ecosystem allows those with excess capacity to connect those with who need a product or service. The sharing economy is revolutionizing new micro markets beyond ride sharing. Okay, Uber, you, you can share uh, riding, but now you can share your business by using sharing economy. Is there any chat? Not yet, Bumita. Not yet, okay. To reach four keys of digitalization for MSME, there are some factors that need to be established. MSMEs need access to technologies such as the internet, cloud computing, and artificial intelligence. And MSMEs need policymakers to ensure an adequate framework of rules and business environments that provide transparency, trust, security, and reliability. It is a huge challenge for Indonesia government to create law and regulation to protect MSMEs while they do the digitalization. It is very important. Digitalization gives many benefits. Digitalization reduces transaction costs by providing better and quicker access to information and communication between staff, suppliers, and networks. It can help micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises integrate into global markets through reductions in costs associated with transport and border operations, and it significantly 
enhance the scope to trade services. It facilitates access to resources, including finance, for example, peer-to-peer -peer lending, training, and recruitment channels, including government services, which are increasingly being made available online. It also supports innovation and greater access to innovation assets, as well as the potential for firms to generate data and analyze their own operations in new ways to drive improved performance. Okay, I will stop. Sure. Okay. Maybe for all the participants, okay. do you want this to is, share? This is already question from Elisa. Elisa. Elisa July. Dari Undip. I want to ask, what is your opinion regarding the PPKM carried out by the government, which has an impact on MSMEs being difficult to distribute their products? Is there a solution for MSMEs to distribute their wares? other than through an e-commerce, an e-commerce platform, because not all MSMEs are accustomed to using social media to sell their products. Well, July, oh, you are not July, you, Elisa, PPKM is a must. Which one do you choose? Many people die because of COVID. Many people getting sick because of COVID, especially the Delta variant, or we can save more life. I am the one who has to responsible for Diponegoro Cemetery. From June to July, usually there only, I, I, I have to bury it Mostly for a month is three or two professors or the, the spouses of professors or lecturers or the staff. But since June to July, in June, I have to bear it 25%. It's only for Umdip Cemetery. In July, 25%. It is a huge amount. Since June to July, how many people being sick by COVID-19 in faculty of Lonanda? 75%. Yeah. Most of them are family cluster. So if one person sick, mostly there are other 5% in this household is already sick. Too. So PPKM is a must. How to survive PPKM besides digitalization? Maybe they, I cannot give you an exact answer. It needs creativity. Digitalization is one of the creativity. Not everybody must join Gojek must join Grab. No, not everybody can do that. But even, even, yeah, even the smallest vendors, where is, siapa tadi namanya? Elisa, where is Elisa? Elisa, where do you live, Elisa? Uh, hello, hello. Yeah, yes, Elisa. Uh, I live in Jakarta. Uh, Elisa live in Jakarta. Uh, how many small vendors around your housing? Uh, maybe around five uh, so on my watch. Yes. Baso or mie ayam or something. Okay. <laughs> Make uh, apa tuh namanya pengamatan observation. Near my office here in Tembalang, there are uh, in very, uh, can, not very, yeah. there's uh, vendors that sell cilok. 
Elisa, you know Cilok? Yes, Miss. Ya, Mem. Cilok okay, or apa namanya? Bakso, ya, yeah, meatballs. In in Indonesia, our meatballs is contain 10% of meat and 90% of <laughs> flour. So, is a uh, misconception of meatball. <laughs> Okay, those vendors, they now put their phone number in their stall. And they put the WhatsApp code, the WhatsApp symbol, besides then their phone number. It is part of digitalization, Elsa, even in a very modest way. Yeah, Elisa, they have to be creative. Not only culinary vendors, vendors in the market, in the traditional market, they offer marketplace for market, for traditional markets. So people don't need to go to the market. In Semarang, Since 2020, May 2020, I remember that. I downloaded an application created by Semarang Genuinely. It's called Tumbasin. It will help you to buy groceries through traditional market. They put five traditional markets in Semarang. Pasar Peterongan, Pasar uh, Bulu, Pasar Karangayu, Pasar Damar, and Pasar, what else? Pasar yang ada di daerah atas lagi satu. Ketingaleh. Yeah? Ketingaleh. You can choose which market. And then uh, you can choose what groceries do you need. And then in 2021, the Tomasin application was broadened their uh, market. For Yogyakarta, Solo, Malang, Bogor. So people are getting very creative for that. Okay, creativity. To conquer the obstacle during COVID-19. Mostly, those creativity involves digital platform in a very modest way until the most advanced way. Oke. Okay. Elisa, bagaimana menurutmu? Are you okay with that, with the answer? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Oke, okay, thank you. Is there any other question, Bu Nanda? Or you can ask it uh, orally. It, you, you can do it. Boleh bertanya langsung, dah? Yes. Yeah, I already uh, informed all the participants, Bumita. Uh, Bumita, it's very interesting. It's mean that uh, the activity restriction that happened in our country uh, recall the cr criteria of an entrepreneur, right? For being creative. The, so, the basic criteria for an entrepreneur. Oh, Nanda. Mm -hmm. Gus and Nanda, both of you are my assistants. You yeah. have a big homework. What, to read the omnibus law? Those omnibus law, 100, uh, 1,000 pages, 819, 800 something uh, articles, they already have up around 41 uh, action regulation. Now, one of them are expanding the criteria of small micro small and medium enterprises the impact is huge nanda how about this there are some participants from many other countries why yeah. don't we ask them to tell us about the experience of the businesses during COVID in their area let's do so nanda okay, maybe sure. we can ask one from pakistan one from malaysia one from australia mm -hmm. and so on 
Okay, Bumita. Maybe we can begin from the Malaysia first. We already have a lot of participants from the Malaysia. Maybe for all the participants from Malaysia, one of you or two of you can uh, discuss with us regarding your experience or your knowledge about the digitalizations of medium, small, and also micro enterprises. And also maybe Bumita, we can uh, relate it to the our recent condition through the pandemic mm -hmm. or is it okay, yeah. Bumita? Yeah. yeah. Okay, for all participants, especially for from Malaysia, we invite you to give an information you, you, regarding. You choose one person to ask. Oh, okay, ask so one directly. directly mention the yeah. name, right? Oh, okay. Okay. It's time for you for Akmal Azerin from UKM. UKM? Akmal Azerin, yes. Yeah, that's from your UKM. campus. Yeah. <laughs> University Kebangsaan Malaysia, Akmal Azerin. Hello, Akmal Azerin. Are you there? Akmal. Akmal Azerin. Oh, okay. Oh, Akmal has a problem with his mic microphone. Okay, from for the microphone. Still from UKM. Nur Anit, is there? Are you there, Nur Anit from UKM? Uh, yes, I'm here. Yes. Nur Anit, okay. can you share? Okay, but uh, actually I don't have the real scenario in my place because I'm in the uh, village, I'm the village people in, in Terengganu. Uh, we, yeah, we, um, I am from rural estate uh, like that. Lah. So uh, for the, uh, I think for the small business, I think I can, uh, I can tell about the uh, actually, we uh, uh, we have the night market or something like that. That but uh, during pandemic, we close it. The government close it. So um, what I can tell that there was so many stall that open uh, along the uh, along the street. Um, and but the government uh, don't really take an action uh, enforcement oh. for it because they give uh, the chances. But still, uh, they still need to ha uh, have the gap about one meter uh, from the uh, the store and the other store. But actually, uh, for my opinion, it's quite uh, make the street become uh, horrible. But like, like uh, we, uh, the user of the street, like the the car, um, uh, sometimes uh, there there will there will a person who want to stop and buy something. So it actually make a traffic a, a very jam uh, like that love. So the uh, night market was closed, but yeah. those, the seller, they moved their business on the street. Yes. They changed the mm -hmm. way they're selling, uh, not only with stall, but also by using modified car. Mm. Uh, no? Almost or like using that. Stall. Almost like that. Okay, mm, okay. Uh, not the real stall, uh, just a... Uh, the open table like that. They open the table hmm. and uh, put some umbrella like that. Just okay. uh, 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 along the road. It will will the government or the police do some raid for them? Ask hmm. them to close or just ignore? Uh, I think uh, in the capital city, uh, I uh, I I um I heard from my friends in the capital in the city is quite uh the government actually take action, but in my place. Uh, the government give them uh, the kelong uh, we call it kelonggaran. Okay. Uh, don't take action lah, uh, macam tu. Okay. So, but the uh, uh, Nur, uh, did the way the the seller sell the sell their product uh, using digital market or using uh, e-commerce or using WhatsApp, using Instagram is mm -hmm. uh, higher than before? Uh, yes, uh, it of course because um, I can see from the Facebook, 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 and WhatsApp status. Um, 
it's quite a lot people who uh, do it but uh, actually i was i want to uh, hide something um, okay. some people some uh, uh, seller use the platform like i think initial health also have it uh, grab food uh, food panda i think initial also have it right panda food panda uh, grab food uh, grab food uh, oh grab food Grab uh, food. Oh, grab. Grab. So, yeah. uh, grab, uh, grab and also uh, in Malaysia we have uh, something like food panda mm -hmm. but actually that thing uh, there was there was a platform where we can order food from the from the uh, using the, the apps without without contacting the seller directly but we use that the apps to uh, or we can, to order the food but sometimes mm -hmm. I realized that uh, if the in ringgit Malaysia, if the seller uh, sell it uh, with five ringgit, for example, nasi ayam, but why we uh, when we use use the food panda apps, we have charge uh, they charge about RM uh, six ringgit six ringgit. It increased the price. Yeah, and Similar we here. also uh, and, and we also in addition we need to pay uh, RM three ringgit for the rider when we when they sign it. So I think it's quite much, it's quite much, uh, it's burden us as a user, but I think it's a good thing, but actually we need to pay to the two people, like two, two, so at least, so in this, in this situation, we need to pay five ringgit for the food, um, one ringgit for the application, for the, for the application and three ringgit to the rider. So the price is, I think is quite burden to the, to the person lah for like us the user uh it's business no it's ah. business it <laughs> is business so you it is the the cost that you must pay because yes. you are stay healthy healthy <laughs> healthier because you are staying at home not uh go outside and get uh contaminated by the covid 19 <laughs> the same the same happened here in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. When you buying thing from by using grab food or go food, uh, okay. the price is higher. Mm -hmm. About 15% higher. Mm -hmm. okay, and then you must pay taxes. Now the government tax to Yes, food. same here, same here. Same government. <laughs> and then uh, we must pay it for convenient uh, price. They said it will go for the driver. Yes. But when the driver came, by your heart, don't you feel some some way to help him? Because he have to wait for our food to be prepared. He have to send our, uh, the food to our home. We give him tips. <laughs> so it is business, no? <laughs> It is not a social social thing. It is business. Maybe, okay. maybe next time when everything was digitalized, those prices will getting lower. Maybe. Maybe. Because maybe. the price that the e-commerce or the apps company do uh, is quite high. It's quite high. The technology that they create the software that they create is quite expensive. The investment they do, they do is quite expensive. Yes. That is the reason, no. Mm -hmm. Thank you, no, for your question, uh, for your sharing experience. <laughs> I'm sorry if I don't help uh, to make the bigger picture about Malaysia because no, 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 I mean... It's, it's good, it's good. Uh, I hope in your area, the COVID-19 is not high. COVID-19 is just uh, passing by. Uh, inshallah. Yeah. Thank you. Stay healthy, Noor. Okay, okay. Nanda. Thank you very much. Uh, may I call one participant, Sumita? Yeah, sure. One more. Mm, I think... Far away, from Pakistan or from Fuji? Um, I already got the name. Mac Kelly from University of Canberra. From Canberra. Hi. Hello, Mac. I'm Mac from Kelly. Australia. Hi. Yeah. Hi, in Mac. Australia, it's actually different depending on where you are. 
because mm-hmm. all of our states and territories have a different government and different rules. Like where I'm from at the moment, there's pretty much no restriction because we haven't had a case in a year, like community-wise. Whereas one state over, literally, I work one state up and it's about 20 minutes over. The rules are completely different. You have to have masks all the time, distancing and whatnot because they've had an outbreak. So it's really different depending on where you are. And it's pretty funny how 20 minutes away has completely different restrictions. Okay. So in Australia, it's completely different with Indonesia, right? Yeah, because our states and territories all have different governments and they all Mm -hmm. have their own COVID restrictions. They aren't, the restrictions aren't made by the federal government, Mm -hmm. like the national government each one is responsible for making their own decisions. And a lot of the time, as soon as there's an outbreak, they just close their borders on each other straight away. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Mac, your territory don't have many people as we have here. No, I live in the smallest one. Yeah, I've been, I've been to also, Canberra. I've been to yeah. Canberra. And it's, it's very quiet. It's very nice. And usually people there are quite uh, follow the restriction. Yeah, we do. The issues were really, yeah. really close to New South Wales. Which uh, is in Indonesia, if we have restriction, it means that we have to break the restriction. So mm-hmm. many people tend to break the restriction. If the government said, do the vaccine, vaccine, many people don't do the vaccine. Stay at home. Many people try to go outside. Most people in Canberra are pretty well off, so they're not really worried mm. about the money side of things. I suppose that's a bonus. Is the digitalization for business also uh, high in Canberra for small business especially? Yeah, most businesses do have a digital presence. I can't think of one off the top of my head that doesn't really. But I think mm-hmm. that's the same Australia-wide from what I know. Mm-mm. Okay. I think it, it's okay from Mac Nanda. Okay, thank you very much, Mac Kelly from Canberra. Okay, back to you, Bumita. Okay, I will uh, continue. <clears throat> My presentation. Medium, small, micro, small, and medium enterprises has already some challenge, okay? But with digitalization of their business, they also more challenge that uh, arose for, for micro, small, and medium enterprises. First, many MSMEs continue to lack in adoption, especially for micro firms. The biggest challenge is the first step for many firms. Once an initial transition is made to digital technologies, there are strong complementaries in technologies that can drive further further adoption. To make this step, and as they identify and adopt additional digital technologies, MSMEs tend to leverage on external systems, support, and advice. This is partly to compensate for weak internal capacities but it's also on cost grounds. For example, digital platform, such as social networks, e-commerce market spaces, and et cetera, provide significant scope to optimize certain operation at very low cost. For example, cost for business intelligence and data analytics services. Similarly, for managing digital security risks, MSMEs capitalize on external consultants or, secure, or the security by design features of the digital products and services they are use. They also source artificial intelligence solutions from knowledge markets and can leapfrog to new AI systems with cloud computing based software as a service. However, Technology complementaries can also contribute to large digital divides, divides, as large and more digital sci-fi firms are more easily able to step up to more advanced digital practices. 
The gap between MSMEs and larger firms is therefore more pronounced in the adoption of more sophisticated technologies, for example, data analytics, or where mass methods for implementation, for example, enterprise resource planning, for back office integration and supply chain and customer relationship management software for front office and production process integration. The entry point for the digital transition for most MSMEs is in general administration or marketing functions, where the digital gaps between MSMEs and larger firms in online interactions with the government electronic invoicing use of social media and e-commerce are smaller. The adoption of a few key technologies in each sector is critical. In the accommodation and food services sector, high-speed broadband connection, having a website and using cloud computing to store files are the main technologies associated with higher value added and larger digital gaps. In the wholesale sector, the key technologies that drives gaps in adoption and value added are e-sales, cloud computing to host databases, and the training of ICT specialists. While in retail, retail trade, e-sales and cloud computing to manage customers' relationships are the key technologies. While policymakers should therefore ensure that small firms can access core digital tools as an entry point to the digital transition, it is important that this approach is complemented with a sector-specific and function-specific approach that prom promotes the most important tools for their business. So you can see each categorized of business needs a different uh, tools or different uh, push to digitalizing their business. Uh, there are some international MSMEs policy, uh, policy in digitalization. Sorry. Uh, many countries are seeking to tackle these issues by providing financial support and accessory services. For example, Denmark's Small Medium Enterprise Digital Program, or the Australian Small Businesses Accessory Services. Uh, for Chile, Israel, Latvia, and Spain, they provide skill training for SMEs. In Iceland and Costa Rica, they upgrade, uh, they create policies to upgrade infrastructure. In Belgium and Germany, they create, they create networking programs. These initiatives will play an important role, sorry, important role in tackling the digital divide, but need to be well coordinated through appropriate multi-level governance and mechanism to align thematic investment. For example, ensuring that the provision of infrastructure is supported by training and advice to enable, to enable their use. How are governments boosting MSME's digital transformation? By scaling up MSME internal capacity, providing MSME's with technology support and assistance through targeted financial support, consultancy, postures, grants, yeah? and technology extension programs by diagnosis, self-assessment tool, a business solution, guidance and package of learning material are a mix of both. Encouraging MSMEs by training and upscaling, by reducing training costs, for example, by giving tax incentives, by giving subsidies, and promoting workplace training, via employers, networks, and association, or intermediary brokers, apprentices programs, or by pooling training investment and strengthening management skill in MSMEs through training, workshops, coaching program, and by raising demand for this program. 
Building a data culture in MSM is by increasing awareness and capacity to manage and protect their data through information dissemination, financial support, or technological assistance. By raising the digital security profile of, of MSMEs through awareness campaigns or providing them with guidance on useful digital security measures, toolkit, auditing, assurance framework, protocols, and certification schemes, and training opportunities. Easing, easing MSM is access to strategic resources, leveraging fintech financial technology and alternative sources of finance for SMEs by promoting the use of new technologies such as blockchains and artificial intelligence to lower transaction costs on finance markets by encouraging the deployment of financing and, mar and matching marketplaces as well as the use of mobile banking or alternative data for credit risk assessment. By encouraging business innovation and the supply of new digital solutions through a range of research and innovation policies, for example, research grants, public procurement, tax incentives, demand side regulation, competence centers, public private partnership, and etc. in the field of digital security, blockchain, artificial intelligence, etc. Connecting SMS, uh, SMEs with knowledge network through cooperation programs with large firm or online platform, or as at least lead public procurement, small business innovation research type program, or networking interfaces. For example, for example, digital innovation hubs, center of excellence, cluster, and co-working spaces. Providing SMS with access to data and technology through test beds and experimentation labs, data center, digital innovation hubs, university transfer office, co-creation platform, and etc. Creating the right business environment for MSME's transformation. Setting a supportive regulatory framework. By enforcing efforts to harmonize legislation on trade secrecy and intellectual property rights protection across jurisdiction. Enforcing data protection regulation, developing digital security legislation and setting standards for the industry, addressing regulatory uncertainties around distributed ledger technologies, and by ensuring the well function of knowledge market where MSMEs can access digital solution. It is a very important homework for Indonesian government if they are going to push MSMEs to go digitalize. Promoting a government and its services for MSMEs through one-stop shops and digital portals, for example, information provision or assistance or certification of simulation online, the only one, the only one's principle. A invoicing, a signature, electronic submission. For example, tax administration and compliance by default. Adoption of new digital technologies in public services for blockchain and artificial intelligence and through open government data. Deploying high quality digital infrastructure through infrastructural development plans and roadmaps. High speed broadband and connectivity in remote areas and other platforms, computer emergency response responses teams or public sector tech blockchain service infrastructure with interoperable, interoperable, interoperability with private sector platform. Uh, to promote, yeah, uh, by developing long-term strategic frameworks, by setting high-level objectives and principles, designing national strategies and action plans, and coordinating investment and action across the board. Creating governance arrangement in emerging policy areas such as AI and blockchains, setting consultative instance and advisory groups at national and subnational levels, involving experts, entrepreneurs, industry, and academia, and local governments 
in order to promote ethical and more responsible digitalization policies. Indonesian government is not perfect yet in creating law in action to protect both parties, SMEs and the customers or consumers. This is still ongoing process. Many resources are shifted through how to handle the pandemic. Many area are neglected or forgotten, but it is not uh, going to take long time to create, to do some action in creating legal structure for digitaliz digitalization for micro, small and medium businesses. The omnibus law, it contains number of additional benefit for SM MSMEs as follow. So this is the way how the Indonesian government try to cope with the situation. During the creation of this omnibus law since 2019, many people are to the demonstration because they do not understand what is the regulation is about. They're thinking that this omnibus law will cut the job, will eliminate the job opportunities. But the omnibus law is very broad. Many things were uh, regulated inside the omnibus law. For example, partnership. An obligation for certain parties to partner or cooperate with MSMEs has been imposed. Such parties are as follows. Government, the central and regional governments are obliged, are obliged to facilitate partnership between medium and large enterprises with micro, small enterprises and cooperatives. This obligation aims to improve the competence and business levels of MS, micro, small enterprises and cooperatives. The central and regional governments must not only facilitate, but also provide incentives and facilities in the framework of partnership, as well as further supervising and evaluating the implementation of such partnerships. Other omnibus law obligates that public infrastructure companies and toll road companies provide space for the promotion and development of MSEs for public infrastructure companies and MSMEs for toll road companies, at least 30% of the total shopping or commercial area within their premises. Business licensing. The omnibus law emphasized the ease of business licensing by implementing a centralized system. All guidelines, requirements, and or procedures will be regulated by and centralized back to the central government in order to harmonize and synchronize business licensing and to avoid overlapping permits. The omnibus law tries to alleviate the complicated procedure of business licensing for MSEs by simplifying the requirement. MSEs, micro and small, will only need to submit national ID or KTP, kartu tanda penduduk, and a business certificate, surat keterangan berusaha from the neighborhood level, rukun tetangga or RT in order to obtain business license. These documents are to be submitted online and a single business number will be issued for micro and small enterprise upon registration and shall apply to all business activities, including business licensing, Indonesian national standard and halal product guarantee certification. It is a very cut off from the over-regulated ways of business licensing. Incentives. Incentives are given for financing, taxation, fiscal affairs, and in the form of free or free relief, custom incentives and income tax incentives in accordance with applicable laws and regulation. For micro-enterprises, they come in the form of tax administration facilities, or simplification in submitting financial financing facilities along with income tax incentive. And 
payment for MSEs, they take the form of free of charge of free waivers for business licensing, custom incentive, specifically uh, specifically for export-oriented MSEs, and is of important role and industrial supporting materials for import-oriented MSEs. Intellectual property rights. The omnibus law enables and authorizes the central and regional government to simplify the process of registration and the financing of intellectual property rights. Other assistance and or special allocation, there are a few other types of assistance or special treatment that shall be given by the government as follows, legal assistance. Central and regional governments shall allocate at least 40% of domestically produced goods and services to MSEs and cooperatives. And financial accounting, accounting system, application training, and assistance. They also will give incubation system. The omnibus law creates an incubation program for MSMEs, which aims to create new business, strengthen and develop the quality of MSMEs in terms of economic value and making them more competitive. To increase the added value management of economic potential through science and technology utilization. The incubation program can be carried out by central government, regional government, universities, the business community, and or the communities. The stipulation of various stakeholders suggests that the omnibus law intends to create and develop MSMEs to achieve a higher level of competition. The omnibus law also provides a clear obligation for the central and regional government and the business community to enhance the capacity of, of MSMEs and their ability to access of alternative financing, partnership funds, government grants, revolving funds, and corporate social responsibility. Now, we reach for the conclusion. MSMEs is very important for national business. It is necessary for MSMEs to move forward with technology in order to survive competition. Digitalization is one of the ways for MSMEs to win the market. Indonesia government already set regulations to optimizing MSMEs digitalization through the omnibus law. This is uh, some of uh, reference that I use. Okay. Nanda, I think my presentation is finished. Okay, thank you very much, Ibu Paramita, for delivering the lecture. Maybe for all the participants, is there any question? The last chance for you to delivering the question to Ibu Paramita. Okay. Maybe is there... Do you want to give uh, the closing remarks, Bumita? Closing statement, the last for okay. the materials. Yes. So, um, for all the participants, the pandemic was a very big hit for the community throughout the world. But the pandemic also created some changes also create uh, some ways people, human try to cope with the situation. But uh, those ways to create opportunities cannot go without law. So law is still very important to control the, uh, what you call it, the new idea. Oh, Nanda, there is a question here in chat. Yeah, well, from UKM, Danish from UKM. Yes, I, I really believe that the government shall regulate the situation. But as I said, many government in the world, they, they are shifted all of their resources on how to control the pandemic, 
on how to help the community to survive the pandemic. I can say that in Indonesia, especially, many practice in the new platform or new situation of business, what you call it, new normal, yeah, in this new normal situation, are like in a jungle. Seperti di hutan liar. No one is controlling. But I hope when the pandemic is controlled, step by step, everything that we did in the new normal will be legalized, will be controlled. So the right and the obligation of the, each party can state it legalize, uh, legally. Yeah, How the vendors right what is the vendor's obligation to the customer can be uh, right legally. Nowadays, we only base the practice by using the uh, regulation on undang-undang perdagangan, the commercial code, and then for using the uh, ITE, undang-undang ITE. Apa itu? Saya Inggrisnya. Information and technology. Information and technology regulation. Mm -hmm. We did not have the uh, regulation on e-commerce, on digital commerce, and so on. Perhaps in the future, we will create the special regulation on that. Okay, Bunanda, I think it's enough. Okay, thank you very much, Bumita, for answering the question. Uh, maybe it's time for us to close this session. Thank you very much, Bumita, for the lecture. And also thank you very much for all the participants for Why joining. Why don't we do the group lecture? photo session? Oh, sure, Bumita. The Master of Ceremony will guide us to take a picture together. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for all the participants for joining today's session. I would like to say, uh, I hope you enjoy the uh, summer course from Universitas Diponegoro, and you can get a lot of knowledge and also information for our experts. Thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon and hope to see you again next time. Back to you, Master of Ceremony, Dennis. All right, thank you so much, Anda, uh, and thank you so much as well to Dr. Paramita Praning Tias. That was a very interesting topic that you guys was, were discussing about. And before we end our session uh, for today's agenda, I would like for everyone to again turn on your camera for those who hasn't, because we are going to take pictures together. Everyone, please, those who hasn't turned on your camera. Okay, um, on my sign, three, two, one. Okay, once more, three. Two, one. All right, that's all. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I would like to congratulate all of you uh, for making it this far because we're going to continue the uh, session next week in Monday at 10 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 a.m. Uh, in local Semarang time. Um, I also apologize if there's any mistake during uh, my during this today's event. 
Uh, so I apologize from the bottom of my heart. And yeah, I suppose that's all. So but before we close our session, I would like to invite all of you to pray because we start this event with praying. So let's uh, let the pray begin. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Paramita and Ms. Atika Nanda. Uh, I'll, I'll see you guys in the next session. Goodbye. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom. Om Santi Santi Om. Salam kebajikan bagi kita semua. Bye. Bye, Bye Om. Thank you, Dr. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Stay healthy.